Shalom, family. It's your brother, your Aki, Judah. Um, just wanted to come and share some thoughts with y'all on just the current time period we in. Um, the second, I'm calling this the second wave of judgment. Um, so obviously, as you know, um, a lot of the businesses are opening back up. A lot of the um, states are opening back up, Georgia being one of the first ones um, due to the whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing. And I just want to um, share a couple of things with y'all regarding what the scripture says and what Yahuwah has kind of instructed us in these last days. Not going to be a long video, short video, um, but it's going to be key. First thing is understand this. A couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but I'm going to mention this again now. Yahuwah instructed me regarding the end time and just how his judgment works. It doesn't, for the most part, other than when Yahushua returns and, of course, the white throne judgment, you can read all, about all of that in the book of Revelations in the later chapters. But if you look at the pattern, starting at, what is that, Gen uh, Revelations chapter 4, um, when it gets into the detail about the rafts and the vials being poured out over the earth, right? It's a process, meaning in that other than, like I just said, other than when Yahushua returns and gathers the tribes, and other than the white throne judgment, where the entire earth will be renewed, and a new there'll be a new renewed heavens and a renewed earth. Um, not going to go into detail about that. You can read it if you read Revelation chapter chapters. I want to say 18, 18 through twenty two. You can read all about that. But in the meanwhile, starting Revelation four, going all the way up until that time period, really all the way up until like chapters like thirteen. 14, 15, 16, right? You can read about the specific vows of wrath being poured over the earth, also known as seals, right? These are angels commissioned by the Most High um, who have authority to bring destruction and wrath on the earth for a specific time period, right? So again, if you if you were to read Matthew chapter 24, right? Hamashia, the Messiah, also some of you all know him as Christ, um, but his name is Yehoshua. He's our Messiah. He went into detail about how the end would happen when some of his disciples asked him about the end, you know, the end of the world, if you will. And he literally said, you know, the beginning of sorrows starts with what? Pestilence, famine, wars and rumors of wars in diverse places. Right. So take that understanding with what's going on with the COVID-19 um, coronavirus here, not just here, but all, all over the earth, right? You'll see that it's a it's a gradual thing, meaning that there's phases and stages of it. Back in November, they weren't talking about it, but it was here and it was talked about. Fast forward to February, now they're talking about locking down things here because they see how quickly and rapidly it spread in China. Fast forward one month into March, governors are completely shutting down states. Right. We're in the middle towards the end of May right now. Right. States are starting to open back up. But remember, the judgment comes in waves. It comes in phases. And again, you can read all about the, the specific type of judgment, how the plagues went in Revelation chapter four. And it's parallel to how the plagues went in the book of Exodus. Right. Over Egypt, when we and our ancestors were in enslavement there. Right. And. Uh, most of y'all know the story about how Moshe or, or Moses, really his name is Moshe, um, was sent to Pharaoh and he, he pretty much told him exactly what Yah told him to say, let my people go. And after that happened, of course, we know Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And what happened after that? Plagues beginning began to be poured out over Egypt. Wow. Guess what? Israel was still captive there. So we're literally seeing a parallel here, right? We're seeing a parallel of us being captive, held in captivity, and we're seeing being plague, plagues being poured out over us here. Now, I know some of you all might be asking, okay, that may be true, Judah, but how come they're talking about how many more um, African-American or blacks are dying if we are the chosen people? So glad you asked. Um, simple answer to that question. Why are we in captivity? Because of forsaking the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Elohim, the Most High, Yah. So again, a lot of these people who are suffering these plagues, mainly pastors, 
leaders of these churches still caught up in Christianity, teaching people against the commandments. It's a part of their judgment. It is what it is. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat this message for you because it's not an easy message to, to, to speak or to hear. But nonetheless, it is the message of the Most High. So let's go into detail about this judgment being poured out in waves. Understand, again, from the book of Revelations and in the book of Exodus, when you read about plagues being poured out, that doesn't all happen at once. First, it started with um, the rivers being turned to blood, right? Then it, no, no, I'm sorry. It started with the locusts. Then the rivers being turned to blood. Then the cattle was killed. And then you had uh, various, various plagues after that. I'm not going to go into detail on, on all of them because there was, there was many of them. It was about nine or 10 different plagues prior to the death angel coming and slaying the firstborn son in Egypt, right? Which leads us into Passover, where, again, those of us who have the Lamb's blood of Yehoshua or Christ over our doorposts, meaning that we're in the law, statutes, and commandments, and we're following him, keeping what he kept, eating the way that he ate, worshiping on the days that he worshiped, and literally seeking him, praying to him with application, meaning that when we pray to him, we don't just pray and keep doing our own thing. No, we pray and we wait to hear from him. And when we hear from him, it always lines up with the scripture. He even says in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So understand this, the judgments that are coming, they're coming in waves. We just witnessed the first wave of the coronavirus, but understand that there will be a second wave. And the wave, not just of that, it, it may not even just be coronavirus. It may be hurricanes. It may be earthquakes. It may be locusts. I don't know if you all have read in the news, but there are something called murder hornets um, that originated in Asia. And guess what? They're over here now. They're in the UK. They're in, they're in the Americas. They're over here now. So what I'm saying is, is that these plagues, they come in waves, phases, and stages. Don't think it's just sweet and that it's just cool because the government is saying, oh yeah, everything is safe now. Let's open things back up. No. One of the advisors of the White House has been saying it's too early to open things back up. Why? Because the virus is still out here. And not just the virus, the plague of the Most High. You want to call him an invisible enemy, but no, he's completely visible. If you read the scripts and you can see with your spiritual eyes, you can see that this is a plague from the Most High. When you look up the word plague, Hebraically, it literally means to be touched by the Most High. So understand, he is the one who has the authority over these plagues. You can read about that in Revelations chapter 16, right? This is the Most High issuing these plagues. So understand, what, what's the way out of it? The way out of it is what? Turning to him and seeking him diligently, especially in these times, because he's giving us specific instructions on what we need to be doing, what, what we need to be doing. We need to be, first of all, praying and seeking him and obeying his commandments. That's the first, that's the first step is, is repenting and turning from our wicked ways, coming out of Babylon, coming out of Christianity, coming out of all these religions that are anti-Torah and following our Elohim. That's the first step. Second step, you need to change your diet. You need to, your diet literally needs to be along the guidelines of a Levit Leviticus verse or chapter 11, where it talks about the biblical dietary guidelines. So you can also read about it in Deuteronomy, I want to say chapter 14, it goes into detail with, with that. Um, so understand that, it's either chapter 14 or 15, one of those chapters, but understand that that's the second thing you do. Third thing, third thing, and the Most High has given me and my wife dreams, visions, and specific instructions on this end time. You need to be stocking up on water. You need to be stocking up on food. Um, you need to um, protect your house. And what do I mean by that? Again, the Bible talks about how in end times, the sword eventually is one of the plagues that's going to come. The Messiah talks about that in Matthew chapter 24. So when the sword comes, you got to be prepared. And I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of guns and do all this other stuff. I mean, yeah, I do believe that every man should, every man should be in a position to protect his household, period. That's Torah. You're the high priest of the household. You are the Aleph. That means strong leader. So that literally means that nobody, no man should be able to come into your house and attack your children without you being in a place to protect them. Obviously, your the first line of defense is the most high. But understand that our, our we're, we come from the warrior tribe, which means that we were skilled in fighting, skilled with weapons, with the sword, 
we were skilled with these things. So understand that's also what you need to be doing. You need to be having your house in a place to where you can protect it. And it doesn't just mean just buying guns. It literally means you need to seek the most high with specific instructions on how to hear to him, hear, hear from him and how to move strategically regarding what he's telling you to do. How do I know this? If you read first and second Samuel, right? And even in, in some of the books of King, uh, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles our successful Kings, specifically David, when he was King over Israel, he didn't just go to war. He didn't just move when he wanted to. He always inquired of the most high as to what to do, when to move, how to move. And the most high would lead him either speaking to him directly or speaking to him through the prophets of Israel during that time period. So what am I saying to y'all? I'm saying be at a place to where you can hear the most high as it relates to what you need to do to protect yourself and your family in these end times. And to be in a place where you are without spot, blemish or wrinkle when the Messiah comes to gather us from the four winds of heaven. So understand that that's that's what it's, this is a spiritual thing. It's not it's, it's yeah, it can manifest into a, a physical thing and it will. But understand, it starts in the spiritual realm, which is why you have to be spiritually discerning in these times. You have to be seeking wisdom for yourself, seeking understanding for yourself, seeking knowledge for yourself. Stop. It's not time for us to be depending on Christianity and, and politicians and jobs and all these other things to give us insight as to what we need to be doing in these end times we need to be seeking the most high for ourselves through the spirit the ruach right so again this message is to really encourage zion to let you know yeah even though it's some things coming up on this earth you know mark of the beast is one of them so understand with the whole vaccine thing that what they're trying to do is, is way deeper than it just being a vaccine it's a spiritual thing and understand that if you take that mark of the beast, you go into the lake, period. Revelations tells you about that. You are sealed by the beast if you do that. But if you get in the law, statutes, and commandments, and you follow the Most High, and you confess Yehoshua, and you follow him, literally, right, by keeping Torah, then you are sealed by the Most High. So understand, that's the goal, is to be sealed by the Most High and to follow his instruction in these end times. That's the only way we're going to make it out of this thing alive so again we went we just we went through the first phase now it's, it's more waves it's more phases of judgment coming and it's going to keep coming and it's going to keep being more and more and more until the messiah returns so i just want to encourage y'all stay strong stay in them scripts and stay connected to the most high through guarding and keeping what he told you to do and hearing his voice so i love y'all um, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to encourage y'all definitely, um, be on the lookout for more videos. Um, I'm going to be dropping the revelation that the most High has given me as he gives it. So I love y'all. Shalom.